So guys, it's not always uh, glamorous work here, right? This crank position sensor is a nasty spot. Uh, actually, if you want to replace it, you have to remove the air conditioning compressor to get access to it. And even to just back probe it here is pretty nasty. So to start off with, we're using the floating method, okay? We back probe the plus and minus of the two wire um, connector on the crank position sensor here. Okay, let's go fire that up. Now you guys are familiar with this pattern. That's a magnetic style, an inductive style uh, crank position sensor. It's a, also known as a variable reluctance sensor. We're getting the full amplitude of this signal by having back probe the plus and minus of that sensor, a two wire crank position sensor. That is not necessarily the way we want to back probe a crank position sensor by back probing those two, the plus and the minus. That minus is not a, to be mistaken for a ground. This is a floating waveform here. And there are quarks that come into play here and I'm going to show you this. Remember that these budget oscilloscopes do not have floating grounds. They have a common ground that goes across all the BNCs and goes all the way through to the USB actually. I want to demonstrate what uh, happens when you take a sensor that has a floating ground like that against common ground oscilloscopes. So for this demonstration I've only got channel 2 hooked up. This is the BNC connected to it. Let's start the engine. channel 2 here right that's not even touching anything I'm going to touch that to ground look at that okay so that's coming across that's a bias that's running on top of our ground and if we did any other work on channel number two while the crank position sensor was back probed across the plus and minus as a floating, this bias would be on our ground. So that is not the right way to back probe a crank position sensor. Okay, so here we're gonna be going two channels. We're gonna be using the plus output of the crank position sensor to ground on channel one, the negative output of the crank position sensor to ground on channel 2, uh, also known as the mirror method. Okay, two channels. Let's go fire up this 2002 F-150 4.6 liter. Okay. So if we expand on that, we're going to see that we have two waveforms, one the mirror of the other. And one of those is more correct than the other 
it reflects what's actually going on there more so than the other. Here's a small cutout of what the reluctor wheel on this vehicle would look like. 36 minus one tooth, all right? And when the crank position sensor is on top of a tooth, this is your maximum voltage. And when it is at the bottom of a tooth, it is the minimum voltage. So as it comes off a tooth, it goes down in voltage. And then as it climbs back up on the tooth, it increases in voltage. You'll notice that channel one here, the yellow trace, is the one that reflects that. From here on in on the video, we're going to be using channel one as the crank position sensor plus to ground. All right, we've got our um, channel one is our crank position sensor. Channel two is uh, number one uh, primary ignition. Let's uh, use that split screen uh, feature that we uh, discussed in gadgets number 98. So, because we're budget-minded DIYs, we don't have a scan tool that's able to set the spark advance uh, steady for diagnostic purposes. The base ignition advance on number one uh, for this engine is 10 degrees in the specs, but we can't just have it sitting there still, right? So we're monitoring it. It's around 14 degrees, okay? And let's uh, record a piece of this in automotive mode. There we go. And we'll save that. Let's expand and study this capture here. Okay, 720 degree overlay, anchor here and here, capturing two revolutions of the crank. And we'll move our cursor over and find the moment of the spark so you can see the this is a again multi strike on this engine right so here's where the first spark line took place right here at around 33 degrees and you'll remember that we had about 14 degrees of spark advance so if we added 14 degrees to that, it would bring us around 45 degrees, you know, 47, 48 degrees, right? It is common for four-cylinder engines to have a 90-degree offset on their reluctor. Uh, a, a V6 would have 60 degrees offset. So I'm going to accept 45 degrees as the offset. Uh, of the reluctor on this V8. So not only is all this information interesting in its own right, but it's going to lead to an upcoming video where we're going to be trying to see if we can rely on the top dead center reference of an in-pressure cylinder wave taken with these $15 PSI sensors and correlate it to uh, some of the things that we know here from this video. So look forward to that. And also look forward to a pretty neat way to power these PSI sensors. So those two videos are going to follow here. See you then.